Welcome to Wordwise, where we delve deeply in the Word of God, discover what it means, and how to apply it to our lives. Today we're continuing to look into the ministry of Jesus, the direct times when Jesus did some important ministry and important work. Today we're going to look at a passage out of the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, in which Jesus calls one of his first followers, and then what happened as a consequence of this man's occupation and his desire to introduce others to Jesus. It's in Mark chapter 2, verses 13 through 17. Follow along with us as we read about the calling of the disciple Levi. Then Jesus went out to the lake shore again and taught the crowds that were coming to him. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Levi got up and followed him. Later, Levi invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. There were many people of this kind among Jesus' followers. But when the teachers of religious law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with tax collectors and other sinners, they asked his disciples, Why does he eat with such scum? When Jesus heard this, he told them, Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. Context is key, as always, when we begin, and we're studying this passage, which comes right after another important passage, which we talked about in previous word-wise. Jesus is in Capernaum. It's kind of his base of operations in the Galilee area, right on the Sea of Galilee, referred to by Mark as the lake in which he's walking along the lake shore. But Jesus has been there a lot, and he would have had regular contact with some of these folks that we're meeting, including the Pharisees that we'll hear about in just a little bit. So as Jesus is teaching and walking along the lakeshore, he encounters a man named Levi. And you may know him by his uh, other name, Matthew. He later would go on to write a gospel with his name, the first book of the New Testament, Matthew, and became a follower of Jesus that really had great influence in the early church because of his writing down all the teachings and miracles that Jesus performed and what Jesus actually said and did. But before all that happened, Matthew, otherwise known as Levi, was a tax collector. Now, you may know that tax collectors in the first century were not exactly beloved individuals, never going to be voted in the city council to be the leaders, the ones who received those special awards. No, tax collectors were kind of despised and hated, for they were viewed by everyone as collectors and collaborators with Rome. They were collaborating with the Roman government. Rome had occupied uh, Israel and was allowing there to be sort of a puppet government, but was making sure they collected the taxes. So each tax collector would, would be empowered to collect a certain amount of tax in, in a town or a village, and then encouraged to go ahead and collect more as a way for them to fund their own occupation and their own selves. In other words, they would have loyalty to Rome because they were able to glean as much as they wanted from the populace and be supported by the, the might of Rome behind the scenes. So they were not exactly favored individuals, especially the Jewish tax collectors, those that were Jewish and were still working with the Roman occupiers and supporting and even defrauding people supporting the Roman government, defrauding the local people. They were hated by everyone. But yet, when Jesus comes across Levi, and Levi is not uh, in any way someone that you would want to be one of your followers, but Jesus had a, a wonderful tendency to call the least expected who needed to know him as Savior and Lord, and then needed to be uh, an example to others of how Jesus loves and cares and can redeem anyone, regardless of who they may be. So Levi... Jesus calls him very simply. You see him there at his tax collecting booth. He would have been on the job and collecting taxes, keeping his logs of all those who had, who had paid or who had not paid. And, you know, as popular as the IRS is today, Matthew, Levi, would have been 10 billion times even less popular. And yet, Jesus walks up to him and says some pretty simple words, right? He says, follow me. Come and be my follower, my disciple. Now, we uh, know this story because of Matthew's instant response. Levi responds instantly and abandons his tax collecting booth and follows Jesus. And while that's wonderful, it probably was not the first time he met Jesus. We don't know this from the Bible, but most likely Peter, James, John, and Matthew had encountered Jesus on a number of, number of occasions. So Jesus would have crossed paths with Matthew before. Maybe they had conversations. Maybe they uh, had different dialogues going on. Or maybe just Levi had witnessed some of the things that Jesus had done and some of the words he had said. So it wasn't necessarily an instantaneous decision the first time Matthew met him. There probably was a history here 
But even so, the significant fact is Levi follows Jesus. He makes a choice at that moment. I'm no longer going to live the life I've been living. I'm going to follow Jesus. In fact, he acts upon this faith almost immediately. The scripture tells us there that uh, later on, we don't know how much time would pass, but Matthew Levi would host a dinner gathering at his place and invite Jesus over. And I love the fact that he invited not just Jesus and the other disciples. No, it wasn't just a party for them, a dinner gathering just to celebrate and honor Jesus. No, Matthew did this intentionally. He invited other tax collectors, and the scripture says, and other disreputable people, and there were a lot of them, apparently, that were following Jesus. So Matthew takes advantage of this opportunity. He takes advantage of the situation. He says, okay, I'm going to introduce my friends, my acquaintances, and all of those who need Jesus. I'm going to invite them, and I'm going to set up this opportunity for them to meet and hear directly from Jesus. I'm going to be the catalyst that makes that happen, because they need Jesus just as much as I did. And Matthew, Levi, he knows he's been lost, he's been hated, he's been far from God, and because of Jesus, he's going to have a future. He's going to have hope again. He's going to have joy. He's going to make a difference in a positive way. He's going to get past all of that negative stuff and all of his greed and all of his sin. He's going to get past all that. Other tax collectors that came to be Christians would give back and repay many times what they had stolen, what they had defrauded, defrauded people from. We don't have a report that Matthew did that, but it's likely he did because he was changed. And we know he was changed because of what he did almost immediately as he invited this group of folks to get together with Jesus. A pretty, pretty amazing dinner party when you think about it. Jesus is interacting with and gathered with disreputable sinners and tax collectors. Now, you may think to yourself, what's the big deal? In our culture, that's not a big deal at all. But in first century Judaism, to eat with someone meant you accepted them. You extended your acceptance, you extended your compassion, you ex extended to them, uh, in a way, your approval. And that's very controversial in the first century, especially when you meet with tax collectors and sinners. And yet, Jesus didn't hold back. In fact, it would have been known that he was gathering with these folks because guess who noticed? Yeah, the teachers of the law, otherwise known as the Pharisees, who were very careful who they associated with. So they don't go directly to Jesus. Do you notice that? They go to his followers. They go to the other disciples and say, hey, why is your teacher, why is this Jesus eating with such scum? And they use that term intentionally. That would have been like what you scrape off the bottom of your shoe after a, a walk in the park. That's kind of the word they're using. That's what they think of tax collectors and sinners, disreputable folks. That's what they think of them. They don't think of them as humor, humans in need of God's love, humans in need of compassion. No, they think of them as scum. And they just want to know why is Jesus associating with them? Because he's essentially giving them acceptance and approval. And does your religious teacher know what he's doing? You know, is he clueless? Does he not know who these people are? And I love the fact that Jesus overhears, that Jesus knows what they're saying and deals with them directly. He doesn't go indirectly. He goes directly and says, uh, something pretty profound. He said, I have uh, I've come to realize that sick people don't need a doctor. In other words, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty obvious statement. But I love the fact that he goes on and says, I've come for those who know they are sinners, not for those who think they are righteous. And be, be very intentional about this. This is a, an amazing quote. It appears in other Gospels as well because Jesus is saying to them, yeah, these folks, they know they're sinners. They know they're in need of a Savior. I have come to seek and save the lost. I have come to help them and to help them find hope in this hurting, lost world. Uh, those who think they're righteous, they're kind of already inoculated. They think they're good enough. They're not, but they think they're good enough. That was the whole point of the Pharisees in some ways. They thought they were okay. They thought that their own works and their own righteousness was enough and sufficient. Jesus is saying not that that's true. He's saying, I, I can't really help you if you don't know you need to be helped, if you're not willing to be teachable, if you're not willing to be humble and open, if you think you're already insulated and inoculated, then I can't really do much for you. You have to be willing to be teachable and humble and open, and you're not. So I've come for those who know they're sinners and know they need help, not for those who think they're righteous. It's a pretty convicting statement. So brothers and sisters, as we learn what Jesus directly said and who he spent time with, I challenge you, as I challenge myself, to take these words seriously. So evaluate your own life. Have we slipped into pharisaic behavior? 
Have we at times allowed ourselves to feel like we are inoculated, that we are insulated, that we are safe in our own works and our own righteousness, not in what Jesus has done for us, but in what we have done for ourselves? That's a dangerous place to be. We are in need of a savior, whether it's the first time you've heard the gospel or the billionth time you've heard the gospel. We are frail creatures. We fall and we, we have still ongoing struggles and we need Jesus every day, every minute to be our savior, to be our help and to be our hope. So brothers and sisters, continue to journey on as we study the direct words of Jesus and learn from the master himself. Continue in this journey as we become word wise. Thanks for joining us.